Hi, now we're going to talk about um, a couple of properties which we talked about in the last video. One of them which is um, something we call unbiasedness of an estimator, which is a good property as we talked about. And the other one is consistency, so unbiasedness and consistency, because these two terms are often mixed up when people talk about estimate properties of estimators. So just reminding ourselves of what these mean, if I was to draw a sort of frequency graph of all the different values which our estimator, let's call it beta hat, outputted on different samples, well, unbiasedness tells us that the expectation of our estimator is the true population value. So this value here would be the population parameter. So this is what it means for an estimator to be unbiased. And this is a good thing because if we apply our estimator to different samples, overall we get a value of the population or estimate of the population parameter, which is equal to the population parameter. So that's a good thing. On average, we get the population parameter. And consistency means, well, if I increase my sample size, so I increase it to, let's say, uh, thousand from a um, hundred so this original one here would be a sample size of a hundred the second one could be a sample size of a thousand or in general as I increase it sort of to infinity and um, so writing it mathematically as n tends to infinity the value which my estimator beta hat output should be or should tend to the population parameter so that means if I arbitrarily increase my sample size the value which I get from my estimator gets closer and closer to the true population value. So obviously that's a good thing. Um, however, this estimator here on the left is an example of an estimator which is both unbiased and consistent. So beta hat in this context is unbiased and consistent, but it is also popular, uh, possible rather, um, to get a estimator which is biased but consistent and I'm going to illustrate how that's possible. So this is a frequency distribution which we get from applying an estimator, let's call it beta tilde, to different sample data and that has an expectation, um, let's call it beta tilde star. And let's say that the actual population parameter is actually a bit lower than what we get on expectation from beta tilde. So in this context, we would say that beta tilde was sort of upwardly um, biased. So on average, we would get a value for the population parameter, which was too high. However, it might be the case that as I increase my sample size, so I'm increasing my sample size slightly there, so maybe that's going from sort of 50 to 100. And then I increase it a bit more. So now that's sort of at 1,000. And then I increase it a bit more, so it's somewhere near a million. So let's, let's just label these so we don't get too confused. So that's one, let's say, 100. This one is N. 200 for example and this one is n at a thousand so we've got a thousand individuals and this one is n at um, 1 times 10 to the 6 so a million individuals in our sample there and notice that the sort of center of each of these distributions as I increase the sample size is getting closer and closer to the population parameter uh, and we could postulate that uh, our estimated beta tilde is in fact consistent. So as I increase my sample size arbitrarily or as, as I increase it so that it gets closer and closer to the population size, my estimated beta tilde is consistent. So that means that beta tilde's output get closer and closer to the population parameter. The reason that I'm discussing a estimator which is biased but consistent is that often we don't have the luxury of dealing with an estimator which is both unbiased and consistent. Sometimes this is the best we can do. 
so we have to sort of make make do with it. Uh, I'm not going to discuss an estimator which is both biased and inconsistent because that's not a very useful estimator for us because as we well because it doesn't really represent what's going on in the population at all. For example, I could sort of postulate an estimator b to tilde hat which was just equal to four. So this function, whatever value of the sample you sort of feed into it, it just outputs a value of four. Um, this isn't very representative of what's actually going on in the population because it just outputs a constant. It's completely independent of the sample. Um, and if this didn't happen to be exactly what the population parameter was, it would both be un or it would both be biased and inconsistent. The next video I'm going to talk about uh, efficiency of estimators. So I'll see you then.